Hello and welcome again to Conscious TV. I'm Ian McNay and today I have three guests in the studio. We have Dave, Chris and Patrick and we're going to have a, a discussion, a panel discussion. And it's a bit of a new experiment and might well be part of a series. We'll see how it goes. Basically, Chris and I were having dinner with our wives a few weeks ago and we were having, as we usually do, we had a mm. quite in-depth discussion about consciousness and about life and how everything fits together. And we've done now, probably on Conscious TV, maybe over 100, maybe even 150 interviews with people that have had some kind of awakening or enlightenment experience or realisation. So we've covered that subject a lot in, individually mm. in people's lives and how it's affected them. But we thought we would widen that and maybe bring in the question is, does consciousness evolve as well? So we've chosen three guests, one of which of course is Chris. And we'll start by, they've all had a degree of awakening and realisation, let's say. And they're just going to start very briefly talking mm. about what happened to them and where, where, where it took them and, and ha very briefly how life changed. And it's a very brief introduction by each one and then we'll, well, we'll see where the discussion goes. So mm -hmm. let's, start, let's start with you, Chris, in terms of what happened for you. Okay. Um, oh, challenge to put it briefly. Um, well, I've been a long-term seeker. Basically, I went to India, as many people did, when I was uh, about 21 and did a lot of meditation for basically the next 10 years, a lot of spiritual practice with different teachers. And I really did do a lot, you know, Tibetan Buddhism, Vipassana Buddhism with Krishnamurti, with Douglas Harding. Or, I mean, all, I, I saw everyone there was to see, basically. And I had, you know, various experiences and definitely learned a lot about my mind. But for me, there was still sort of sense that I, I hadn't found something that was really, that, that would answer all questions. I knew, I knew it in myself in spite of everything I'd done. So for, for me, um, it, it came for me on um, meeting my last and current teacher called, called Andrew Cohen. And it wasn't anything particular, but I, I'm sure it's related to all what I'd put in all over those years. I'd read everything about enlightenment, meditation, consciousness. I knew what it was supposed to feel like and how it's supposed to be, but that wasn't actually my experience, you know, no matter how much I read about it and practiced. And it was strange. I, it was just after a conversation with him, I suddenly realized that actually everything was different. And I realized that it was like a, a lifelong existential anxiety had just dropped. And I realized that actually who I had always been was my natural state, that it wasn't something out there. I mean, which, of course, I'd heard anyone can repeat that sort of thing. Yes, there's nothing to find, it's just within you. But this was, I knew it. I knew it throughout my whole being. And there was a sense of dropping and a sense that, oh, I've come home. This is actually what I'd always been looking for. I knew it. And then I realized that meditation I'd been doing, well, that's my natural state. The consciousness, the ground of consciousness is the same as meditation. That is who I am. I can't, it's not some state to be acquired. It's, you know, it's who I'd always have been. And, you know, and then you sort of realize that, well, that's actually been, I've had intimations of that all through my life at moments, but I'd never recognized it. I'd no one had ever pointed out saying, that's what it is, that's who you are. So, so the coming home you found in your own way somehow. Yeah, and that for me was like, from that point onward, it was like, that was a powerful experience that lasts for, actually for many weeks. You know, I just, I didn't feel like doing anything. I just sit there, basically in meditation, but I wasn't doing anything. It was just, just abiding in my, in the natural state of consciousness. So it's not like that that has been, you know, I somehow became fully enlightened or anything like that, but I, from that point on, that was about 25, 26 years ago, I've, I've known, there's something I've known, it's not like I know anything, but I know that mystery, I know before the mind that that's who I am. And in the answer, this, this, this fundamental thing that, that there was always something missing. So from that point on, I knew, and then when I'd look at the you know, all these sort of sacred texts, of, I'd say, oh, that's what they were pointing to. I, I knew it. I yeah. know it for myself now. And that was, for me, the sort of f fundamental experience. I've had many since, but that was the one that really was the one... But, but what, it, one, th one thing that people talk about sometimes on Conscious TV, it's almost like it's grace that intervenes and you do, do so much work and you're trying to understand yeah. things. At the end of the day, though, something happens that is almost independent of what you've done and then 
yeah. something's revealed. I think it's true, but there's also another statement that says that doing a lot of spiritual practice makes you accident prone. Very good. You know, because <laughs> cause I knew, because I've seen many people, have sort, I've tried to sort of yeah. say, yes, I'm enlightened, there's nothing to do, but it's just like fooling yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, you can say, I know it, there's nowhere to find, and you often the kids coming and saying, and I've done the same for years, you know, sort of being annoying like that, but uh, it is related to what, you know, because if I hadn't done that, I don't think I could have let okay. go in that way. Okay. Yeah. Good. Patrick. Well, I mean, very similar to Chris in many ways, because we've, 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 we're sort of the similar age and we followed a similar path, because I, I also went to India when I was uh, uh, in my early 20s. Um, but I think the story starts from my background. I was brought up as a, as a strict Catholic, and I had a very good upbringing. But I always had this sense that, you know, something was wrong, or there was a sense of something was missing. And uh, I was motivated by that, you know, to, to try and find... I knew there was something I, I hadn't found. And even at an early age, I used to, uh, looking back, I used to meditate. But I didn't know that's what it was, or didn't, nobody had told me. So I had some intuitive sense that being very still and just being with nature, because uh, I was brought up in the country, I used to find it just very rewarding and peaceful. And I never even told anybody about it, because I didn't have any, there was no, nobody had, had introduced me to it. And so I it was like a natural to yeah, you? Yeah, I find that, and I find a lot of uh, solace in that. But as I was gr growing up and I became a teenager, I really felt in a crisis, especially around, around 18 to 20. I was a, as an art student. and. Um, and I didn't know where this was coming from. Like on an existential level, I felt really <clears throat> confused and quite disturbed, even though on the surface everything was fine. There was nothing wrong with my life or my upbringing. And uh, I remember then, um, I think it got triggered, I saw uh, Osho uh, on this TV. Big, also known as Big One, Shri Rajneesh. At the time, yeah. 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 And, and I just had uh, just some upheaval in my, you know, uh, sort of inside. And I knew, oh, whatever it was, it was something like this. And that was the first time I'd encountered something outside myself that represented what I was looking for. So I got very involved in that whole um, journey, which is a story in itself. Um, and then I immediately was having much bigger, you know, sort of the things you read about experiences of, of, you know, higher states of consciousness and very joyful and ecstatic. Because that was also part of the movement, was that kind of, um, those kind of experiences. So my, my range of experiences expanded in contrast to what I'd been experiencing earlier on in my life. So this was great. Um, but it wasn't until actually more recently when I met my last teacher that uh, something more subtle became obvious to me, that, that uh, it was always the same person who was having these experiences. And actually, my understanding to the degree it is of non-duality is that it's actually a shift of identity. And, and that happened. Um, with my teacher, and uh, and then I, then that was there's just something much more thrilling and, and there's more of a revelation so, in that. That so how did your identity shift? Was it one event or was it a process? It's 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 a sort of a combination of many, okay. many, and also a lot of serious spiritual practice, serious meditation, and, and then also a growing understanding that was unfolding. That oh okay. Uh, I just needed to understand what was going on, and, and I, I needed to be educated as well. It wasn't just a matter of me having particular kinds of experiences. It was also an education of the nature of this dimension of the self. Yeah. It's quite s complex and subtle, and, and I think I, 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 like many of us, I think we need to learn what it means. I, at least I, that's how I've come to understand it. And so then I realized, so oh, there's a shift of identity. And I don't know whether that was a moment or whether it was a, it's a combination of a moment and also a just a deeper understanding. Can you just very briefly talk about how that was experienced in yourself, that shift of identity? It's a sort of like you realize that you sort of knew something. It's a bit as you read it, in, like Chris was saying, when you read it in the books, it's all very obvious. Where you, oh, it's, it's always been that way, but I didn't recognize it. And then I realized I'd actually recognized it, but I also, it's, 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 it's a sort of non-rational, you realize you knew something, but you weren't aware that you knew it, so it Could was already the case. And so it says, "Oh, it's already the case." Uh, but and, it's, and how did you feel when that happened? Oh, I, I, I feel. To I mean, I feel like this fundamental sense that there was a problem isn't my reference point, okay. and that's that's great. And uh, and and there's more, but that's sort of like a shift in, okay. in priorities. Well, that's great to start yeah, with. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, your turn, Dave. 
Um, yeah, I think it's similar and different in many ways. My, my trajectory and journey is very similar to Patrick's. Uh, I was a young man. I think what I had at that time, I was brought up the, the sense of God or the sense of religion, but I felt what was around me, the adults that were around me and my parents, they didn't really have any sort of convincing explanation about what life was about or anything that really resonated with my own experience. So I was lost and seeking and I came across the most alive people that I came across at that time uh, because I started exploring in the human psychology movement. The, I came across people that were sannyasins of Osho Rajneesh and uh, I felt that they were the most alive and most vibrant people I'd ever come across and that attracted me. Well, I wasn't really attracted to a teacher or a teaching and I didn't even know that I'd had spiritual experiences until something, you know, I had a huge explosion when somebody was giving me a massage that just sort of <laughs> catapulted me into a kind of sea of being. Uh, and even then I didn't know that that's what it was. It just occurred to me and I had a number of um, spontaneous experiences around Osho, but uh, particularly I had a, an energy darshan mm. with him that integrated all of this mm. and I could look back and see all of those experiences that they were spiritual experiences and it added up and I had a number of sort of non-dual awakenings at that time. So I think my life uh, since that, that time and just like Patrick's a kind of accumulation of deep experiences but also trying to understand what it means and what its relevance to life is and I think that I think that um, I grew dissatisfied with the explanations that the um, body of teaching around Osho did in terms of trying to make sense of life had. So I was seeking for other teachers. I went to see Barry Long. He had a very Western approach. It was very powerful. He had some very, very cogent and interesting teachings around ego. But I felt, as a teacher, not satisfied with the way he taught in terms of how he engaged with people. I didn't think it was engaged enough because he simply left you these metaphysical principles for you to apply. And so I'm with my current teacher, Andrew Cohen, I felt he has a combination of understanding of the non-dual, a deep experience of that that he can transmit and awaken you to, which has continued through my life, and then also a profoundly sensible and rational explanation of what it means to encompass that side of being in life and what it means to embody and become and be closer to that experience of perfection that you find in an on-dual. Was, was there a particular point, like with Chris and Patrick, they both <coughs> talked about identity shifting. Was that something that you can, can um, connect with? I think mostly <coughs> that's occurred for me, not so much in the way for Chris and, and Patrick. It's mostly a, 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 occurred over time of recognising, I think, that when the evolutionary teachings of an evolution of consciousness teachings starting to emerge then all of those things came together so the shift of identity for me has been more with not more with becoming rather than being so that shift when the teachings of becoming became much more uh, pronounced and much more um, uh, explicit it was then like the shift of identity I could identify myself with both poles of the human experience in a, in a much more clear way than I think that I've ever done when it was simply a being experience. Okay. So one of the things that very much mm. came out of <coughs> our dinner, where, that mm. we're going back to the, explain how this program came about, was we've had many guests on Conscious TV which we could say were, were from the Advaita <coughs> school <coughs> or whatever, <coughs> and their understanding and their experience is that when you realize who you are or you find the ground of being, you wake up, whatever the, the term mm. is, then everything is consciousness and there's nothing to do and like mm. Mm. in that it's a tremendous relaxing and of course yeah. relaxing is a great thing, we're not going to say mm. that we're not relaxing. <laughs> but there's also a feeling amongst other mm. guests we've had that's not the full story and I think mm. you three fit into that category mm. in so far as yes, you discover my term is the ground of being. That's the yes. term I, I, yeah. I connect with personally. That's yeah. experience that I've had sometimes. The ground of being. Mm. I know that. I know that to be true. And certainly for me as well, the ground of being is almost a starting point for a great adventure. Mm. It's like you come out yeah. of, or you start to come out of all this neurotic conditioning we've had, mm. which is all part of the, the human cycle. We, 
we, le we learn from our parents and from our experiences, from our school, whatever. Mm -hmm. We learn to be a certain way. And then, and then there's a process of uncovering mm -hmm. and rediscovering mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. actually we're not all those things That's we thought right. we were. Yeah. Yeah. So there is this point where you think, ah, oh, I'm not all that. So what am I? And then mm. that starts to get revealed. Mm. What am I? And then there's this challenge, well, mm. or adventure, a new adventure. How do I live my life? Right. Mm. Yeah. On the ground of being, I'm consciousness. I realize I'm not actually a separate being as such, a separate mm. human being. What does that mean practically in day-to-day -day life? Mm. And that's going to be the foundation of our initial discussion here. Yeah. So, yeah. Dave, you're, <laughs> modding, you're nodding the most eagerly. Uh, so, right, 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 right. Right. <laughs> so what does that mean to you when I say that? <laughs> about how do we then live our life as a human being? Well, I mean, I think one of the things for me is to actually uh, understand the nature of the spiritual experience. Without a clear understanding of what's revealed there, then um, how you apply or make it relevant mm -hmm. to life itself um, can be quite clouded. So it's the conclusions that you draw about the nature of that experience and your... Un and I find in my own experience has been the development of my of my the understanding of what that is and what mm. that reveals and what that means. Then um, it's through uh, contemplating the the nature of that that I've understood more fully how how to live and how to apply those principles. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean practically? So, um, for example, um, the most rational explanation, like I was saying, is from my current teacher. And uh, th with, there's four or five principles in which um, I apply in my life, and that what that's what guides guides me in terms of mm. deep principles. So, what one of the most inspiring is clarity of intention. So, in order to be a, a free expression of the ground of being, unless you're clear that that's the most important thing that you want to do in your life, and you put that above everything else, your ability to be free in the midst of the hurly-burly, complexity, emotional uh, onslaught of life itself. Um, your ability to navigate that and stay true to your deepest principles is compromised and you, can, you easily get confused and lose a sense of purpose. So that would be one of the principles and that's... I, okay, I so what that. you're saying is you have an understanding, yeah. you have also a realisation and of course, as we all know, there's these temptations in the world, especially if you live in a city mm. like London. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Most people are not, mm. not, not through anything they're, they're, they're doing or wanting, wanting to do that, that on an intentional basis, but they're trying to pull you out yeah. of yeah. your understanding, of your realisation. What you're yeah. saying is you're making a commitment yes. to whatever happens, you yeah. come back to this is who I really am. Yeah, exactly. In different situations. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Chris, yeah. Maybe I could uh, say, um, take it back a little bit because, like you were saying, um, you know, this experience or or non-experience, whatever it is, because in a certain way it's like discovering who you are is not really experience because it, it's it's who you are. It's not experience to discover who you are. It just is who you, who you are. But but that is, it does, in a certain way, answer the most fundamental question because as you say there's something missing, something lacking. There's a sense that we're fundamentally that we're separate from everything, which is the sort of the dissatisfaction that, that so many people feel. But then having answered that, and in the classic way that, you know, I f like for me, I felt from being a seeker, I realized, well, no, I'm a finder. I, this is what, you know, I've mm. found what I'm looking for. And there's a certain sense of coming to the end and dropping that, you know, that, that constant sort of churning, there's something missing, I want, there's something missing in my life. And I'm, I'm there, you know, and that's what the, People, you know, as I was saying, so recognize you're saying in the you books. don't have that now. Then. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 having found <coughs> that, and that's the sort of the finding that answers all questions, and that is true. But I think sometimes uh, it's made out to be well. Therefore, you just uh, dwell in the quest, abide in the questionless state, and you just live your life, and the, the the world's there, but sort of way back there, as a sort of not really interfering. Your ego's disappeared. But actually, I found, and I, I, this is what I found from. Um, many other people, it doesn't actually work like that in practice, in a life. Actually, I found, and many others feel, that it wasn't like my interest in life, I realized that, that life is just some pale shadow, these are just some sort of, these roses are just some sort of color out, 
out there. You're, you're just a sort of uh, appearance of light and form, a mind-body organism, you know, you know, acting out your pre-allotted <laughs> you know, role. Actually, I found it, it much more started to liberate my own interest in, in life and, that, and realize that that current that had driven me to seek is still there, but it's not like I'm neurotically looking for something I'm missing. It, it, to me, it's much more liberated into life, into actually being more interested in, wow, it's extraordinary to be here and, and do here too, you know. And, and to, I think for, for me, and, and I know many others, it, it's sort of sharing, well, life actually is interesting. And that urge to find out, to know more, to do things like this, to talk about this, mm. this isn't coming from ego. I think distinguishing, because mm. some people say, oh, well, this is just your mind, because you, if you just dwell there, you know, uh, you know, those who speak do not know, you know, the sort of uh, <laughs> Taoist thing. And it's true in, in its own context, it's very true, but there's a lot more to life. We live in an engaged life, and in it, I feel it, this means something. It means something to be here. It's an extraordinary adventure, like, like you're saying. And then, that, that actually, to pursue that and, and find out that, that that actually impulse to find out is not coming necessarily from the ego. It's the expression of that same, yeah. that, that same source, that same ground of being in action. It's not different. Mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah. to me, is the, the revelation yeah. of uh, a different ap approach where it's not, you know, so you fundamentally dwell here like, and that's fine if you live in a cave or, you know, in a monastery, but in our life, that's not sufficient. There's more to life than just the ground. It, yes, it's always the foundation, but it's not the sum of life. Mm. And I think that's uh, just put it okay. yeah, simply. Right. Yeah. And I just, yeah, to, um, to continue there, because I think this question of what, what does the non-dual understanding mean in relationship to life is really what what mm. you know is a, is a very profound question and I think uh, it can engage us like for the rest of our lives and and one answer is that it has nothing to do with the rest of life that's one of the and so, but the other side is that there's an understanding of what that experience means in relationship to life what I think I think that's what fires mm. us up and which mm. we like to talk about because it's the understanding of what it means and and uh, in, in terms of uh, spiritual language it means you've transcended the ego and and that means you've transcended uh, the belief in being a separate individual and I think that has everything to do with how you relate to life because if we then engage with life and we engage with the, f the things that we enjoy and the things that excites us and the things that compels us mm -hmm. uh, and, and also what is the what is the goodness of what we discover in in the ground of being or in the non-dual, that sense of perfection. Mm. What does it actually mean? How does it translate into life? And that's, that's a really mm. exciting question. And it's an exciting thing to engage in because it's not like there's an immediate answer to that, but there is a direction. And this direction mm. is, is what uh, we're working on and what yeah. we enjoy engaging in. And, and what we're doing today is to talk about this uh, because it means, I it means I can engage with you and each other in life without being a fundamental sense of separation and difference as a fundamental. Yeah. Mm. And that changes the dynamic, doesn't it, considerably? Yeah. Because often when we engage or... So explain how that works practically. Mm. So you are now engaging, you know, your life force is, is, is being directed in a different way. And it's yeah. Yeah. rather than coming from separate, it's a me, 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 I want, I want, I mm. want, which the ultimate ego story is, is always going to take you. Yeah, or, or you're, you're working you're, it out, or you're getting yeah. over it, or you're getting so, through it, you know, you're getting towards a better... So, so you're now coming from a... From a from a, not a position, but you're coming from a, a feeling the force is coming through you where you are moving forward yeah, as part of the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, but I mean, how does that manifest well, um, practically it, so we can get a feel for that? Well, them? it manifests as, as a sense of optimism and positivity about life at a fundamental level. So it doesn't mean that there isn't ego. This is not, let's not pretend that it's as simple as, you know, that, that because you know, as we engage, there's all kinds of forces at play, there's all kinds of conditionings, you know, there's all kinds of habits, and there's also, you know, there can be, if we're engaging creatively, there can be confusion and, you know, all things to work out. But I mean that there's a sense that we're not coming, we're not divided, we're, there isn't a fundamental division. And yeah. I, I mean, practically, it, it, I mean, it changes everything. I feel it changes my whole orientation, yeah. the yeah. way I relate to people, yeah. the way I see people, the way I... Uh, think how things can go, my sense of w what's possible. I mean, it's sort of, it's, it's hard to pin it down to, 
anything in particular. It's a sort of a different view of how life is, actually is already. And I think then we, then we see how things turn out, like when we engage and when we create. Because it's e cause the opposite of that is that you might be unconsciously have all kinds of limitations already put on events or occasions that you're not even aware of that, that say, well, things can't really work out or can't really be that good. It's, it's like it takes the... It sort of takes away those restrictions. So it's that changing your attitude to absolutely, some extent. Absolutely, yeah, really, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. But I, I mean, just want to add to yeah. that, if I may, um, because I, I think what, one other thing that struck me so um, forcibly and that I feel s so important is that realizing that that my own interest to find out that that whatever that current in life, you know, that with the, the thread that we feel, and you know, which is the deepest self. It's not. Not, not some personal ambition to achieve this or that, but the actual mm, interest right. in life, or, which mm. I would call, you know, is, is, you know, as you're saying, it comes through us. It actually comes from the source. It is, mm. the, it is the creative impulse. It's that which mm. makes us alive. It, mm, yeah. You know, I'd say it is consciousness in, in action, that that I mm. feel in myself. You know, and you feel it when you get passionate about mm. it. You feel it coursing through your veins. You know, it's like yeah. what lights up a person. Mm. And, and of course, we often think of that as well. I've got, you know, we've got your creative interest or your interest or passion. You know, Ian's got his, Patrick's right, got right. his, and that's a conventional yeah. understanding. Yeah. But in going beyond separation, as Patrick was talking about, just as when we experience the ground of being, we realize well, it's not Chris's ground of being or Patrick's right. or Ian's. You know, there's actually we're talking about one unit. That, that's why it's so liberating mm. because we realize, well, that's a, it's a my deepest nature, but it's the deepest nature that there's, there's only. It, you know, it, it's it's um, there's a prior unity. It's always the case. It's a prior freedom. Yeah. But just the same as this isn't my. It is my, m you know, my creative interest and it is Patrick's and it is yours. But but at a deeper level, it, it, it's one creative impulse. It's one evolutionary mm. impulse. And then you see that that the more I think you engage with that, then there can be lots of creative friction and sparks. But mm. you're not trying to score. You know, it's not f four egos. You know, jockeying for position and going, well, I, I like yeah. this, or working around each other. Yeah. You realize, well, there's a different possibility for human engagement in that. I think yeah. that's, to me, what's exciting about it, because you, you're yeah. recognizing yeah. Um, a unity in action. So yeah. I think what you're hinting at is yeah. that with a the, with the, with the new understanding or a different yeah. understanding, which is which is which is mental and is, and also experiential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you are not when when you're going about your work or whatever. You're not in competition with somebody right. else. Mm. You're not giving your power away to somebody else. Yeah. But you're working yeah. at different levels in different ways yeah. as a team. Yeah. Because in yeah. a way we yeah. we are if we if we say we all come from the same source, which mm. is the realizations that you yeah. guys have had yeah. part of it, yeah. then it is all. A team. It, all, it is all yeah. one that's moving together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yet right. you've got yeah. your yeah. own totally expression of it. It's not yeah. like that's we're right. sort of. It's not like you know when people t talk of, uh, you know, like sort of walk-ins or you know you're channeling something because it's not like you know I'm I'm this is speaking through me and <laughs> mm. I'm a sort of, you know, expression of some alien force. It's, it's much <laughs> more of being the deepest person that you always could be. Yeah. But it's expression of one thing. Yet of course. It's mm. unique, authentic expression of, of you or, or Patrick or me. Mm. And so it's sort of, I think in a fascinating way, it, it brings together that, you know, that endless philosophical question okay. of what the mm. one and the many mean. You know? So when mm. things are not going easily, mm. what <laughs> happens then? You know, it's these, these things, I'm, I'm sure there's some yeah, people yeah, out yeah. there saying, yeah. well, these guys sound great, yes, and everything's going well in their life. But what mm. happens when your partner walks out or your business goes bankrupt or you find you've got some kind of really bad illness. Well, does it? How, how, how I, 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 can, I can speak to that, um, you know, very directly because my mother died this year, so uh, she um, had been sort of unwell for many years, but this year she uh, got a, a massive stroke, and after about three or four weeks, she slipped away. So, you, bereavement. And that sort of loss is probably one of the most profound, mm. disrupting things you can have to your sort of personal values and can um, shake your faith whether life is good or not. It's very challenging to your emotions. The sense of loss and the sense of grieving um, can sort of consume and overtake you, and it did for me. But the thing is that I fundamentally knew 
that I was committed to this kind of creativity, this uh, unity, uh, unity consciousness, you could say, the evolution of consciousness, because I know that I was committed to that. It didn't shake any profound doubts about, didn't create any profound doubts about the, the, my conviction about what life is about and uh, what we're trying to create together with my close friends here. I ha didn't shake my conviction, so I still have had, I was able to maintain a positive conviction about life itself at its deepest course from being to becoming is still a positive process and bereavement and loss of my mother is still, a, 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 whilst relatively um, distressing and upsetting, it didn't shake my profound convictions in what life is. So, so, I was, so what, what was that, when, did you have to remind yourself of your intention, of your commitment, or was that automatic, that process? Well, I think that over, I mean, I lost my father when I first became a student of my current teacher, and uh, at that time I wasn't mature enough or understood enough the principles. So actually my conviction was shaken and, and I went through a lot of turmoil and was very confused. But because my conviction has developed over time and because I've seen that it's worked over time and because now I know I'm fully behind my conviction that it didn't really shake it in any way. I was still knew that fundamental positivity was the ground of my life. Yes. And, and the, so it had obviously deepened during that time. Yeah, it had, yeah, over the six or seven years yeah. between there between me losing them both, so. Um, and okay. it's, but it also says something about our fundamental character as human beings, because in, as human beings, because our characters are relatively undeveloped, in challenging circumstances, we tend to abandon our convictions and have a lot of self-doubt, and self-doubt about what we've realized, or <coughs> truth, or what's true, yes. because mm. of the emotional upset. So I, 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 I can say that um, what I'm engaged in currently is allowing me to mature in, in relationship to the deepest truths that I've experienced, but also the relative distress and the discomfort of really challenging uh, events. So, mm. what? F mm. How do you actually feel that maturity developing? What uh, are the signs for you that it develops? Okay, you've got the outside practical signs that yeah. when something difficult happens, you you deal with it much yeah. better. But yeah. what inside? What are you aware of? Well. I think, really, and I think this is sort of true of human, human character, you don't really know what's going on. You don't really find out until you're tested or challenged. So, um, you know, the way that our development is set up, there are various, at various times, there are sometimes that are more important than others. And I know that I've delivered in, in, in those important times. So, really, my internal experience of it, whether it's good or bad, sort of becomes secondary to... Um, demonstrating commitment, intention, and responsibility uh, at important moments. So, you Commitment, know. intention, and responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk personally, either Chris or Patrick, yeah, about I mean, I just, how you yeah, found just to add to, yeah. I think it's, a, it's a very so. good question. I mean, how do you deal with challenges? Because that's really the kind of things we like to really know about. I mean, I think... Um, in a simple sense, I, like Dave, I'm aware that, that um, a lot of challenges are really not the end of the world. So you, you sort of have to hang in there. But, but the, the, these deeper understandings of, of like, you know, responsibility and commitment really do na help you navigate uh, complicated situations. And I think the most, if I think about the most challenging thing I've ever had to go through is this really giving up. Um, <coughs> giving up a sense of like being, you know, right about my limitations. You know, like the the, the true spiritual work and development is actually letting go of your own ego to some to some degree. And I think that's the most challenging thing. That if I think about what's been the most challenging thing to me, is that it's really demanding. But if you if you trust deeply enough in 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 those experiences that the spiritual experience, which say everything is good and there's everything is one. Even if it doesn't feel like that, you know it's true. So you can trust very deeply in a way that's maybe but, not immediate. But can you always do that? Well, I have found, yes, that up, okay. up to this point so far, okay. yeah, <laughs> basically. So that's as far as I've got. So you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. But that's, that's a good, that you can draw. That's why, you know, what you do in time 
how so you, you can, can, you can draw back. on what you've done is also you know yeah. so that 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 realization of who you really are is is always there and it's yeah, just and I, as we talk about it i mean i'm yeah, not yeah. always but i can see that it has it's it has it's a deep reference point it's not yeah. even necessarily i don't have to remind myself yeah. okay but when you look at what you've also mm. done if you've done mm. the right things you yeah. realize it has its own power yeah. mm. and also it helps you uh, go forward yeah. and so okay that, yeah. so but, when you but say i think that that, that takes I mean, just say my, my little bit on this. I mean, I think this doesn't just happen by itself. I think yeah. I think it takes a lot of some of the things we're saying of following our intention of of committing, you know, of realizing what's most important and actually giving ourselves to that. And mm -hmm. and that sometimes you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing, you know, even my in my best moments. What I know is true. Like all of us. Sometimes I'm not in touch with that at all, and I think everyone is, if they're honest. I mean, maybe if you're Ramana Maharshi, that's never the case. But for most human beings, you know, you, we're all fickle. You know, we're conditioned. You feel all different things. You wake up in the morning, you, you feel lousy. You don't feel inspired by anything. But I, I think, uh, but on a deeper level, I, I think, first of all, for you know, of having a, a deep conviction and and realization of a ground of being but even more so I would say is from having more and more experience and, and trust in in this um, interest in life this I, I sort of what I'm saying the sort of passion for life itself of, of coming to the realization and conviction that I'm not ambivalent about being here mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. it's maybe a joke that right. we're in here I don't want wonder well why am I here why was I born you know what's the point of all this it's a lot of this rat race this whole you know, world. I think of being fully um, convinced, you know, beyond the mind, that being here is a really good thing, mm -hmm. that life is fundamentally good. And I think there's a certain um, spiritual self-confidence in that, and a confidence not because I know something, but a, a, a confidence in the, the, the uh, you know, the the positivity of life. I don't mean like some sort of positive thinking, like you've got to sort of remind yourself yeah. or mm -hmm. never think positive, but beyond that, of knowing that a lot of really bad things happen and a lot of challenges, and there's my own ego, there's everyone else's, there's terrible things go on in, in the world, it's true, there's a lot wrong, but I think that actual life process and that which I feel most deeply is, you know, I'm saying positive, it's sort of, it's beyond that really. Mm. You know, I think I think it, it, it's good with a capital G. <laughs> you right. know, and I, I think that gives uh, the sort of metal to go through things. But as Patrick's saying, you don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we all don't know how we're going to do. You you know, can't go ahead. Well, I can face everything because we don't know. I think that would be mm -hmm. arrogant to sort of think yeah. that we can deal with everything. I don't know. I don't know how I'll face death mm -hmm. or whatever challenge. I don't know how I do it. You know, and when you see the calamities some people have to face. Right. But mm -hmm. I think I think there's a, there's a trust in that we're you know, in, in, in going ahead and taking risks and we'll find out, you know, and hopefully mature more. Can I just add to what Chris is saying? Because what's interesting in, in this um, is that uh, I find when you start to see life this way, it becomes quite radically less about yourself. You mm -hmm. feel a natural, you know, motivation to share this perspective and, and not, not in some kind of missionary way, but, but it's sort of, it's mm -hmm. such good news that and it's you realize your own st your own story that you've been involved in for very long is actually a very small part of the real picture mm. and this is something that that yeah. you know that that um if i can say that motivates us is, is you know it's it's sort of natural to want to share it because of the nature of it because uh you can be very busy with your own journey for for a very long time uh, mm. but but you, but part of this view is yeah. well it's that's just a small thing it's it's important. It's not insignificant, but it, there's a bigger. You awaken to some. It's a bigger story going on, and mm. uh, and mm. you yeah. It's kind of. Mm. This, what, so so where is the biggest story taking you in your life? What do you feel? Well, it's taken me way beyond where I thought I was going to go originally when I started seeking. Because I think when I started seeking, as many, if you want to just sort of sort something out that's bothering you, mm. and uh, and, and it, it, it takes you to to a cliff edge. I think in many mm. ways, often. And that's both thrilling and challenging. It takes you. It, it makes you entertain uh, ideas about what's possible about yourself and also life that are so um, that are not really what's going on in, in in the world that we normally the way we look at it. But it makes you start to really contemplate them in in a serious way mm. to see where you stand about making them possible. 
because you realize yeah. actually yeah. who's doing all this anyway it's us that are creating the conditions around us so so it, it really um, challenges you in the best kind of possible way to, to yeah to the thing I'm picking up from all three of you is that you really bring you haven't used this word but you bring intelligence into the situation yeah, right. yeah. in so yeah. far as it's you you, you 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 have experience you have realization you have awakening mm. and then it's a question I think you talked about it originally Dave you very you then look and you understand mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. what actually happened and what yeah. and then you feel what the potential is of this situation yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 this understanding that everything everything comes from the same source everything is moving somewhere yeah right mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. kind yeah. of I guess it's also a question of refinement yeah mm -hmm. and your movement yeah. is yeah. kind of in a, in a more refined yeah. more intelligent more yeah positive way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love the way you've put that because actually you know you asked that you know what are the practicalities about this but actually there's a delight in making those refinements and increasingly subtle discernments so the subject of this uh, talk is the evolution of consciousness so actually the more refinements and more critical discernment that you can make about situations about life and its many complexities actually that has the consequent effect of expanding your consciousness mm -hmm. not in the ground of being but your consciousness of life itself and encompass as much as and include as much as possible so mm -hmm. uh, and the explorations like we're having now and actually the, the more sincere and profound they are it expands your sense of consciousness now so my mm -hmm. sense of consciousness now of who I am and what we're doing together has expanded from when I came in the room and sat down on this chair. Yes. So that is a practical application. <coughs> it's just not a material, mm. to totally material and visible, evidential uh, thing that you can quantify in scientific terms, but it actually is a material event because we're discussing it now and our consciousness is of ourselves and what we're engaged in here is expanding at the same time mm. and it's developing through those refined discernments. Yes, mm. well, one of the phrases I mentioned to Chris before we had the talk and yeah. he wasn't sure about this phrase, but I'm going to throw it in the pot, see how, <laughs> how, how, how what emerges. <coughs> so something that I read many, many years ago, which is not an original statement, but it really mm. impacted me at the time, was about being man in the world but not of oh, the world. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and that a very classic much, uh, Dharma phrase. Yeah. That very yeah. much for me yeah. is about not going and living in a cave in the Himalayas, not that I'm at all attracted to that anyway, yeah. but not, yeah. not removing yourself, although you might mm. do for two or three weeks or even mm -hmm. a few yeah. months. Mm. But it's very much living in the world, but not being caught mm -hmm. in all the dramas of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's somehow yeah. a dance, because yeah. if you get too far away from the world, you kind of can bring in denial. Uh -huh. If you get too involved, it just swamps you. you get that, lost in it. That's yeah. a constant yeah. challenge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you yeah. find yeah. that? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a classic phrase that one, and, and there's a lot of truth in it. You know, it's like, you know, you know, I, I'm sure you probably know this from the classic Zen way. They talk of the, they have the ox herding pictures, the ten oh, yeah, stages, yeah. and at the end, the sage is in the world. He's in the marketplace. You know, goes to emptiness, and then you know and seclusion and then back in the marketplace you know in the middle of life getting drunk but somehow untouched by the whole thing not involved in it you know which is, mm -hmm. is, a, is, a, is a you know beautiful concept but I, I think I'm interested in something different than that I, I mentioned to you because I think often understandably that the, the uh, the, the direction in the spiritual path and a lot of it is all about transcendence which we've been talking about mm -hmm. finding something that's beyond that's untouched beyond the world beyond the mind beyond anything and that's why it's so liberating you know and but that is that's not the whole picture because the, there is a, a world here you know this is real this is real I don't believe this is an illusion I don't <laughs> believe Dave is an illusion <laughs> sitting next to me I'm and uh, so I sort of feel like we need that perspective, you know, because unless we've got a liberating, you know, know something untouched by it, we're, we're going to be lost in our mind because that's going to be our reference point, the separate self. But if, if we can more and more the separate self sense, not be small separate self sense, the ego, me and my, my small world, be the reference point for everything, the, the, then I think, you know, I think we can, what well, I, I put it to you is that, I, I'm more interested in fully being here in the world, 
you know, mm. but not from the point of view of a separate self sense of mm. being, yes, I'm really here. I feel that, you know, there's been a 14 billion year evolution to get us here, to, to develop, to be, you know, our consciousness, to be able to reflect on things, to be mm. able to sit in a TV studio and have these marvelous things, to be able to engage rationally mm -hmm. and yet not to be caught up in the, all, all the limitations of rationality of saying that's the only mode of doing mm. of in, you know of, uh, of reality yes it's important but it's limited so we recognize the transrational and the rational and we recognize um, being here in the in the world I sort of feel like well yes we're here this 14 billion year process hasn't been so that we can finally realize oh god actually I was never part of this whole thing let's get out of here <laughs> you know, this is just some pale shadow, you know, and, and I think, you know, it, it's beautiful that I mentioned to you that someone, you know, famous teacher Eckhart Tolle, you know, who's obviously deeply realized, but very much in the ground of being. He says that, you know, existence is just a ripple on the surface of being, which is beautiful. It, that's the most perfect expression of that perspective, mm -hmm. but it doesn't tell you about... I, I, you know, one it's totally true in that perspective, it's wonderful, you know, I really respect mm. him. I think there's, there's more to the picture. Mm. It's not just a ripple, it's actually as, as real as being. Mm. And it's not different, you know, this being in life from a different, from, from a different uh, perspective, mm. from, from this uh, consciousness that we feel mm. in action, I feel it's the same thing. And, and I sort of feel, in a way, that's a, a if you, to, Put it theoretically, that's a greater non-duality, I feel, or more mm. all-encompassing non-duality, mm. mm. which doesn't deny, of course, that what he's saying is totally the foundation, always has been, always will be, mm. but there's more to it, I feel, mm. in our day and age. Do, yeah. do, 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 do you feel that you'll have a potential that you're working towards, or is mm. it just that the journey is taking you somewhere you're not sure where it's going? Do, 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 I, I know, I know mm. for myself, I was very much goal-driven for a long time, mm -hmm. and I still am to some extent, to mm. be honest. But there's, there's that, I can also see that changes over time, and it becomes mm -hmm. less, I must do this, I must do that, and I must do it in a certain way. And I'm just wondering whether, whether, whether mm. the potential is part of your process. Well, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, some of that is, is yes, and some of it is really because of the nature of potential. You want to see how it unfolds. Um, um, but uh, I was just, there was a thread I wanted to, to follow on from. But, but, but it's, it's always related to this understanding of what this ground of being really is. Mm, and I, 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 just, yeah. I think it's so important mm. to have uh, because it might sound like we have got that covered and then we're really interested in evolution. That, that's never the case. This is a, mm. this is a sort of a, a non-dual understanding that, like Chris was saying, that includes mm. the world in that non-duality and the unfoldment of it. Mm. And I think it's important to always have yeah. a deep respect and really serious interest in this ground as a reference point. Mm. Uh, but we also need to be able to let go of it uh, because uh, one of the things I find interesting, because I teach meditation, and classes and and uh, often as we speak about and explore I like to explore with people their understanding of meditation and you realize there's a lot of confusion about it but one of the things is in meditation you're supposed to learn how to let go like really let go completely not just of this and that but really let go which is you know is a very is a very profound thing and it, it can take you know decades and even lifetimes to understand that but I think it's equally true in life we also need to learn to let go and often you know, with, with um, unconscious understandings of what meditation mean, there's a sense that the world is something you've always got to be wary of. Like you were saying, mm. you know, you don't want to get lost in it. Mm. So um, there's always a, you know, and it can be quite deep even to uncover that. You, know, you, don't, you don't really want to get involved because the world is where you get lost mm. and you really, get, you really find yourself in this deeper place. But I find that real let, really learning to let go is that you don't have that attitude to life. It's really unknown. It's, it's an open book. It's full of potential because yeah. there's no potential in the ground because yes. there's nothing there. That's the beauty. You, that's why you want to go there. Yeah. But when you look at life, it, I mean, it's all potential. Yeah. So there's this yeah. larger, you could say it's like a larger meta view, yeah. but it's experiential, that it's good. So you want to know, well, so what do I do if we have potentially so much freedom and there's nothing really in, in the way? There's nobody saying or there's no, you know, there's, in, uh, there's, there's yeah. just potential. So I think there's lots of obvious things 
that can be you know immediately obvious because of our own life conditions and maybe talents we have and, and, and capabilities and things we'd like to do that you want to act on. But it's always in this backdrop of really it's an unfolding potential. Mm. And I think that's... that's so it's not fixed. You feel the potential, you feel the force yeah. of the not potential. Not fixed is exactly but right. But you don't yeah. know where it's taking you. You don't so know, where, but, but yeah. you know you're going somewhere yeah. and it's good. Yeah. That's, you know that. Like you said, yeah. you said earlier on, uh, you noticed that we were, were going somewhere. That's yeah. one of the, the, the yeah. deepest, real, that's, yeah. one of, that's what you awaken to. We're actually yeah. all going somewhere. Yes. And then you, there's a growing responsibility for that yeah. if we dare yeah. do such a thing. I'm let, we've got yeah. three minutes left, and Dave has been yeah. itching to <laughs> yeah. for his. No, no, because actually, you know, you could. Um, I love the way Patrick put it, because you could actually characterize the ground of being as unmanifest potential. It's only mm. potential, but it's not actually in form. And, right. you know, your own real intuition or realization that there are potentials, that actually that unmanifest potential experienced with you and with others is you realize there's just greater potentials so rather than being like self-focused on your own worries and concerns you this shift of identity is more you're more uh, you're more passionate about creating and untapping and realizing greater and greater potential so your focus becomes on well what new structures higher structures of integration and harmony can we create and using your own creative potential and together with others to, to create uh, more diverse and more creative expressions of the unity that you experience mm -hmm. in, in the ground of being. So kind of your own creative potential and latent potential uh, starts to be realized through, the, through these kinds of expressions and interactions like we're having, having now. Okay. Chris, the last minute's for you. <laughs> <laughs> well... I think it's great having a conversation. I feel we're just getting going. Yeah, getting going. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's great. But I, I sort of feel that, that what I'm interested in is, you know, which everyone's been saying here, is about that we are going somewhere. And mm. it's a direction. It's not that we know where. It's not like there's some goal that we know. I don't know what it is. But it is towards, I, I sort of feel, mm. it, and it's not some sort of concept out there. It's, it's actually the, the, the nature of the creative impulse in me. You, you want to know more, to mm. find out more, to become more, to, you know, get a deeper integration, deeper understanding. And it doesn't come from the separate self sense. It's mm -hmm. the nature of life. And I think mm -hmm. that's what we can share. And that's why I feel very positive about what we, I mean, I'm saying we, who, whoever's interested in doing this, can create together. I feel that that's the potential mm -hmm. of life. And that's what excites mm -hmm. me. Okay, yeah. it's a great place to finish. So, mm. Dave, Chris, Patrick, thanks very much for coming on to Conscious yeah. TV. And Thank I, you I very enjoyed much. it. It was Thank a very stimulated discussion. Thank you. And maybe Thank it's you. the start of something. I think it probably mm. is. And, we'll, yeah. and actually, viewers, do very much give us your um, response to this discussion. And maybe you'd like to join us at some point in your view of how consciousness can evolve and how that evolvement is manifesting and affecting your life. Thanks again for watching Conscience TV and I hope we see you again soon. Goodbye.